guys, so I'm gonna do a it's TTC update time. Let me go ahead and call up my chart. Blah blah blah. So no baby. I am very sad about that. Um, obviously. I was actually like my um chart this month, which I'll put up while I'm talking to you. My chart this month looked really good. It's like our timing was, was pretty good and um, every time in the past on um, charts where I've not conceived, um, my temperature always will start to go down right before um, I get my period or the day of. And this time my chart, the temperature didn't really go down like that so I was so hopeful because the only other time it's not gone down was when I was actually pregnant with Sophia. So, needless to say, I was like, I got my hopes up. I was sad. But that's, you know, oh well, what can you do? So, um, my cycle this month was, or this past cycle was 39 days, so it's still long. Um, and let's see, the cycle before that was 49 days, 50 days, something like that. And the cycle before that was 40 days. So, I f it was funny, on this one, um, I felt like my cycle, like my whole cycle was going to be a lot shorter, um, because I was like, oh yeah, I ovulated on day um, 27 or whatever it was, uh, but then I, then I realized that the month before I had not ovulated till like cycle day like 39 or something, and so it seemed like a lot better which it was compared to that but in reality that's still really late so yeah annoying long cycles I hate it because it's like it just takes you if you don't conceive you just have that much longer before you get to try again so you know it's like right now um, I'm on cycle day I don't even know like two or three or whatever but it's like I gotta wait almost a month before I'm even gonna ovulate and like you can see how that's really discouraging. So, anyway, this month though, I did something different, and that is I tried this new first response fertility test. Okay? And I do not know a lot about this, so I don't want to go um, and kind of like educate about it because I don't feel like I know enough to tell you guys. But what it does is it's basically you use it on the third day of your period, and you count the first day of spotting as the first day. So say that you start spotting, and then your period starts, and then that third day, third day you start. Not the day after the third day, like the fourth day. It's like, like whenever you start, wait a day, third day, test. So I did. And basically how it works is it's kind of like an ovulation test in that, um, not, it doesn't predict ovulation, but it's, it works, the actual test works like that because it's basically um, if you have no line, or a light line, it means that your levels of um, the hormones that basically cause the egg to be released and et cetera, et cetera, are good. And if the line, um, if your line, if your test line is as dark as the control line or darker, that means that the lines that the uh, chemicals are your that you have in your body are high. They're elevated, which means there's a problem. So you basically, with this test, you want the your line to be lighter than or not there at all. And mine was definitely there, but it's lighter than the other line, which means, all that means is that my, um, the hormones in my body that tell how many eggs and tell my eggs to be released are working correctly. So that's good. And it's supposed to be over 95% correct. There's not really a lot of reviews on it yet because it's too new. But I did see some neat things about it. Like there was an article in the New York Times about how um, it's kind of thought to be accurate enough that you can actually take this in to your fertility doctor and be like, hey, I got a dark line. I think I have a problem. And they, based on this test, they'll be like, okay, and they'll go ahead and test you without you having to maybe wait, you know, the recommended year or however, you know, long. So that's cool, but yeah. But anyway, the way the reason I tried it, I didn't buy it. I think the test is like $25 for two or something. It's because I actually got a free one with pregnancy test. So I was excited to try it. I was like, cool. But yeah, it doesn't really tell you a lot. I guess I have normal levels, so yay. <laughs> anyway, if anybody else has tried it, let me know.
Because, like I said, if you go try to find reviews on it, not a lot of reviews are going on. So, anyway, so that's it. I don't have anything else to report. I um, started testing really early because I cannot resist. And, uh, of course, it was just, I mean, there was never even, like, a hint of anything. Um, I don't know. I, I, on day, like, 11, um, my uh, luteal phase, that's the day from when you ovulate to when you get your period, is about 12 days. Um, and so on day like 11, when I did have a positive, I was like, yeah, so yeah, here we go again, try again. I, um, I don't know why, I had high hopes last cycle, and so, I don't know, the other thing that's happening though is that, um, I have, I am in a wedding next September, okay, so a year from now I'm in a wedding, and I really wanted to have this baby with enough time to like lose a little bit of weight before that wedding and I don't want to be due near the wedding and I don't want to be nine months pregnant at the wedding and I don't want to not be in the wedding because I know some people to you you're probably like it's not a big deal like who cares just don't be in the wedding or who cares just you know whatever but it is a big deal to me because the um the girl whose wedding I'm in, she is just one of the neatest people, and she's really important to me, and I really want to be in her wedding, like, I'm really excited, so it does matter to me, and I don't know, I'm just sad because based on when I ovulate, if we conceive this cycle, I'll be due around the end of July, which doesn't give me a lot of time. And I don't really mind if I'm, like, a fat bridesmaid because <laughs> I just had a kid. That's okay. But it does make ordering the dress really hard. Uh, like, she has put out, you know, we're supposed to all go order our dresses, and I've just been postponing because I've been waiting to see. And so Kyle and I talked about it, and if we don't conceive this cycle, we might wait and try to start conceiving again in, like, February so that I'm, like, seven months pregnant tops at her. But I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I hope we don't even have to think about that. And like I said, I know to some people you might be like, that's silly, why would you wait to conceive, blah, 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 but I don't know, it's just, it's not silly to me, just like know that, it's just a big thing, and I really wanted my kids to be closer in age, and right now it's like they're just not going to be, that's just not how, I guess that wasn't in the cards for us, um, I wanted my kids to be less than two years apart, um, and right now, if we don't conceive this month, they won't be. So, they'll be two years apart, which there's nothing wrong with that, you know. <sighs> it's just how it is. You know, you just can't, this isn't all up to us, so I just always have to tell myself that. But, it is annoying testing every day. I'm like, just wake up and be like, okay, here's my temperature. Okay, my temperature's still high. Oh, I'm gonna go take a test. And then you test, and you're like looking at it, and then you're supposed to throw the test away, but I like always keep looking at my test. I'm just like, maybe it'll change, even though you can't count them, even if it changes after the timeline. It's so silly that we do that to ourselves, but we do. So anyway, here we go again, more ovulating, or more ovulation test strips, and maybe this cycle I'll ovulate earlier, please. <laughs> I hope I do, because I do not feel like waiting for a month to ovulate. That's so annoying. But, okay, so I hope all you guys are doing awesome, and sorry, I don't have any good news to report. <laughs> believe me, I'm sorry. And um, yeah, I'll just do an update later. Middle of the month. <laughs> Alright, bye guys.